And now, a collection of quotes from the world-renowned and visionary director, Hayao Miyazaki. Everything is so thin and shallow and fake. I think that the work we're doing is snatching away children's power. The future is clear. It's going to fall apart. What's the use worrying? It's inevitable. I don't ever feel happy in my daily life. All of humanity's dreams are cursed somehow. It would be wonderful if I could see the end of civilization during my lifetime. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hayao Miyazaki, one of, if not the biggest name in anime today. Co-founder of the now legendary Studio Ghibli, as well as director of some of the most critically acclaimed anime films of all time. I mean, his movies have been nominated for and have won Oscars. You could say that his films completely transcend anime as an art form, and honestly, he deserves every bit of praise he gets. The films of Hayao Miyazaki are nothing short of miracle portals that whisk us away to beautiful scenic vistas filled to the brim with delightful characters and stories. I mean, even something as simple as food becomes a highlight in his films because of his ability to depict anything we can imagine in such a magical, satisfying way. And, oh man, just looking at this is making me so hungry. It's a good thing then that this video is sponsored by Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat. If you'd like to enjoy the delights of authentic Japanese snacks without having to, you know, go to Japan, Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat have you covered. These are two incredibly cool Japanese snack boxes that you can have delivered right to your house. Sakura Co., for instance, is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box that allows you to partake in traditional, genuine Japanese snacks and teas. Each box containing 20 artisanal treats created by actual local Japanese snack makers. In addition, you can also get a special Japanese tableware. This month is the Neko Tanagui, basically a traditional Japanese towel. Look, it even has little cats on it. It's so cute. You will also receive a very helpful booklet with information on the snacks you receive, allergen information, as well as just Japanese culture in general. And I mean, just look at this thing. It's so cool. It's really fun to just flip through while you're munching on your tasty treats. Sakura Ko's box theme for July is the Festival of Tohoku. This month, you can enjoy the delightful flavors of the Tohoku region's colorful and festive celebrations from the comfort of your own house, including snacks like peach cognac jelly, walnut mochi, a peanut senbei cookie, and mini shrimp tempura, just to name a few, all of which pair beautifully with the refreshing matcha genmaicha tea. I, for one, am incredibly fond of these apple cream cookies. I don't really care much for apple snacks in general, but these are on a completely different level. If I lived in the Tohoku region, I would probably be eating these constantly, and that's not an exaggeration. However, I gotta make sure to save my appetite because I still want to talk about Tokyo Treat. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack box that specializes in exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks, including both instant ramen and drinks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Just like Sakura Ko, Tokyo Treat also has a monthly theme, the theme for July being the Okinawa Snackin' Oasis, which I can't think of anything better to accompany your summer than the adventurous tropical flavors of Okinawan island life. Also, just like Sakura Ko, Tokyo Treat comes with a booklet listing the treats you will receive, allergen information, and info on Japanese culture. Speaking of, I really could not get enough of the snacks that were in this box. The cookies and cream cake Kit Kats were by far the greatest Kit Kat I had ever eaten in my entire life. The Ariel sour cream and onion chips were crisp and savory, and the Shikuwasa soda was incredibly refreshing, especially if you drink it in a little cup, just like this. That's really important. You gotta get the little cup. The Okinawa styled ramen was also a big hit with the kids, which I mean, food is always better when you share it with others, right? If you too would like to indulge in the flavors of Japan from the comfort of your own home, or are in the market to get a cool gift for a friend or family member, use the code KITSUNE by clicking on the links below to receive $5 off your first Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat boxes. Thank you so much to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video, and we hope right now that you guys are enjoying some delicious snacks all the way from Japan. And now, back to the video. 
Miyazaki movies are nothing but magic and imagination. And this feels so divorced from how Miyazaki is as an individual. If you're into anime, there's a good chance you've seen a quote or have watched a clip of Miyazaki that comes off as, well, to put it lightly, kind of grumpy. Miyazaki is not one to sugarcoat his words. If something bothers or annoys him, he's going to not only be upfront about it, but also incredibly blunt. I mean, this is the guy who told Disney representatives to their faces that he thought Fantasia 2000 was terrible, which his translator at the time didn't have the heart to tell them outright, so instead they were told Miyazaki thought the film was interesting, which is just... Wow, that's that's really funny, actually. <laughs> it could come off like Miyazaki just hates everything, and I've actually noticed a lot of people take umbrage with this aspect of Miyazaki's personality, asking things like, well, is there anything he does like? He just seems like a joyless, bitter old man. It really makes you wonder, why exactly is Hayao Miyazaki like this? Why does he have so much disdain packed into his shriveled heart? Well, to answer this, there is no better place to look than in the past, during Miyazaki's early life and upbringing, which was not exactly ideal. Miyazaki was born on January 5th, 1941, which considering that this was during World War II, this really was not a great time to be born, especially considering that American bombings on populated civilian areas was a common occurrence at this point in Japan. And this was something that Miyazaki would be exposed to very early on in his life. At the young age of just four, Miyazaki and his entire family had to flee from Utsunomiya to escape an American bombing on their home. A situation so dire that they couldn't even stop to help others who were also attempting to escape. It was a woman carrying a little girl, someone from the neighborhood running toward us saying, please let us on. But the car just went on going. I still think how much better it would have been if I had told them to stop. This is where we get to one of the first cores of Miyazaki's disdain, his hatred for war. And who can really blame him? War upends people's lives and in most instances snubs those lives from existence. Something that we need to keep in mind is that Miyazaki lived through this. He didn't watch it on TV, he didn't hear about it after the fact, he experienced it with his own two eyes. And something like that is always going to stick with you on a personal level, especially at a young age. The reason the reason I call Miyazaki's anti-war stance one of his cores of disdain is because his hatred of war branches out and helps explain a few other of his dislikes. One of the biggest ones being America. Miyazaki has been incredibly critical of the United States through his lifetime. Which makes sense, after all, war is something that America is very good at and has indulged in numerous times over the course of its existence. So of course it makes sense that Miyazaki is the red, white, and blues biggest hater. Even going so far as to be completely absent for the Oscar ceremony where his film Spirited Away won Best Animated Film, the first time a film from Japan had ever won said award. The reason I wasn't here for the Academy Award was because I didn't want to visit a country that was bombing Iraq. At the time, my producer shut me up and did not allow me to say that, but I don't see him around today. By the way, my producer also shared in that feeling. This is exactly why Miyazaki's next film, Howl's Moving Cat, Castle would be a blatant lambasting of both America and its indulgence in war. And while we're on the topic of Miyazaki hating America, this brings us to the second core of Miyazaki's disdain, rabid consumerism. In the 80s, Japan was in the middle of its post-war economic miracle, and with it came an abundance of media, advertising, and of course, products. Basically, a shift towards materialistic ideologies. In the past, Miyazaki has stated that he has always held disdain for the Americanization of the world, as he puts it. Claiming himself to be anti-fried chicken, anti-cola, anti-American coffee, anti-New York, and anti-West Coast. So, when he saw this same worship of consumerism begin to take hold of his home country in the 80s, he was understandably distraught. 
This worship of materialism has been criticized by Miyazaki before, one of the best examples being from his film Spirited Away with the character No Face. Basically a faceless entity that does nothing but consume and consume, which could be seen as a mocking parody of what it means to be an otaku, someone who does nothing but consume media. This is one of the key aspects of why Miyazaki does not exactly feel much fondness for much of the animation made after the 60s, because he feels as though modern day animation is made by otaku for otaku. Almost all Japanese animation is produced with hardly any basis taken from observing real people, you know. It's produced by humans who can't stand looking at other humans. And that's why the industry is full of otaku. So yeah, Miyazaki does not exactly have kind words for many hardcore anime fans. However, he has been upfront that despite his disdain for otaku culture, he has continuously contributed to it over the course of his career. After all, despite the fact that the greater filmmaking community sees his movies as quote-unquote true cinema more so than just your typical anime, it doesn't change the fact that Miyazaki is still making a product that will go on to be packaged, sold, and consumed in mass. In fact, sales of My Neighbor Totoro merch is one of the key factors that has led to Studio Ghibli and by extension Miyazaki's fortune. He's grateful that thanks to this he's basically able to make whatever movies he wants, however he also wrestles with the thought that he is contributing to the widespread brain rot of of the masses, particularly the children that his films are aimed at. It presents the question, should beautiful art be allowed to exist if that art is at the expense of others? It's no secret that Miyazaki loves airplanes and has shown a particular fondness for the fighter planes that were created in Japan during World War II. Despite the fact that these planes are beautiful and incredibly well constructed, Miyazaki understands that these planes were ultimately used to kill people. This is the central conflict presented in Miyazaki's 2000 2012 film The Wind Rises, a highly dramatized biography centering around Jiro Horikoshi, the designer behind Japan's Mitsubishi A5M and A6M0 fighter planes. Miyazaki wanted to make the film because he identified with Horikoshi's dilemma, the fact that something beautiful he had created could be used for evil. All I wanted to do was make something beautiful. Miyazaki is a complicated guy, and this is something that he's very aware of. He knows that at his core, he's cynical and in a lot of ways hates the world around him. So then why is it exactly that he's able to make such whimsical and positive films? Well, I think ultimately it's because he is so introspective. He has many conflicting feelings and he's upfront about these feelings, not only with himself, but in the films that he makes. And The Wind Rises, it's it's never blatantly answered whether or not what Horikoshi is doing is right or wrong. It simply presents the question and leaves the answer up to the viewer. And this is one of the reasons why I love Miyazaki's films as much as I do, because there's a certain level of ambiguity to them that is so true to how life actually is. I think that naturally our brains try to separate things into good and bad. After all, that's something that helps our brain come to terms with the concept of morality and what we should and shouldn't associate ourselves with. But the fact of the matter is that life is not that simple. This is something that Miyazaki understands and has shown annoyance for when people try to reject this aspect of life. The concept of portraying evil and then destroying it, I know this is considered mainstream, but I think it's rotten. This idea that whenever something evil happens, someone particular can be blamed and punished for it, in life and in politics, is hopeless. One of the biggest reasons Miyazaki comes off as grumpy as he does is because he's been fighting an internal war with himself for over 70 years. This is why he aims his films at a younger audience, because he puts all of his faith into today's youth. Because they're the ones who must be influenced to build a brighter tomorrow. Why do you think Miyazaki is so insistent on portraying the wonders of nature in his films? Because he wants to instill this same wonder into the kids who will watch these films, and hopefully this will lead to them wanting to take better care to ensure that this nature is preserved in the future. Despite how little faith he has in the world around him, he wants to believe that his art can make a difference and impact the world in a positive way. 
So I think it is fair to say Miyazaki is a bitter, grumpy old man, but he's also someone who can see the potential in those around him. And instead of simply pretending the negative aspects of humanity and the world don't exist, he's incredibly vocal about them because that's really the only way that people get better. And that to me is what Miyazaki's films are about. Just living life, taking in both the good and the bad and making sense of it all. So does Miyazaki really hate everything? Nah, I don't think he does. Despite the fact that he hates a lot of things, I don't think he simply hates just for the sake of it. He's outspoken because he cares, and to me, that's the opposite of being a hater. If anything, that's just being real. And sure, I definitely don't agree with everything that he says, but I still respect him for being as upfront as he is. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with all of Miyazaki's critiques, or do you think that he's just a grumpy old dude yelling at clouds? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you've seen, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in more videos specifically about animation studios, please check out the video we did on Gainax. It's pretty neat. I honestly think that you'll enjoy it. There it is right there. You can go click on it and check it out. It's really cool. Until next time, guys, take care.